What's up everybody, Serenity here and today I'm bringing you 5 categories of tips to make you a better player. In this video I'll be talking about how sound works, how to use a peeker's advantage, moving better, making good murder holes and crosshair placement. So my first tip is to understand how sound works in this game. Let's start with sound propagation. In just about every game, for example CSGO, Call of Duty, Battlefield, the sound goes through walls. In Siege however, the sound doesn't go through walls, it goes around them. So if you hear an enemy shooting to your right, it doesn't mean that he's on your right side, it means that the shortest route between you and him is on your right. Here's a few examples. I don't know how well this will sound on YouTube, but I was totally hearing that sound coming from my right. If you're right next to a doorway though, it seems like you won't hear it coming from your side. Check this out. Oh, and as you probably already know, some sounds actually go through walls, for example, footsteps and when you're placing down a breach charge. The next sound related thing I want to talk about is sneaking. When you're trying to be sneaky, you have to look at the floor and acknowledge what the floor is. If it's carpet, you're gonna make a lot less noise, so you don't have to walk. If you're on, let's say, metal, then you're gonna have to walk a lot more, even if you're far away from the enemy team. Here's what it sounds like. And that's why it's a lot easier and quicker to flank on plane where there's a lot of carpet than Hereford base where it's almost all metal. The last sound related thing I want to talk about is using other sounds like explosions and gunshots to your advantage when you're trying to be sneaky. What I mean by that is if you hear the fight break out and there's a lot of explosions, gunshots or even EMP grenades going off, you can sprint without worrying about the enemies hearing you. Trust me you will love it when you hear those EMP grenades going off, they make such a long and loud noise. Just make sure that you don't start sprinting when your team is talking very loudly. It might sound stupid but I actually do that a lot. I guess it's become subconscious for me because every time I hear loud noises my brain thinks sprinting is a good option but the thing is that not all noises are coming from the game and so I get killed by that a lot. Actually paying attention to those three tips will greatly help you optimize your roaming game. So I'm sure all of you heard about the peeker's advantage. Some of you might not understand how it works so here's a quick explanation. Because of latency it takes some time for your computer to send the information about your movement to the server which will send it to other players. Here's an easy way to visualize this. Imagine there's a ghost right behind you that follows you everywhere you go. It's separated from you ever so slightly. That ghost is where other players see you. So if you peek an enemy, you'll see him well before he sees your quote unquote ghost. So if you know the map layout very well and you know exactly where an enemy is, you can peek and kill him before spending 250 millisecond peeking on his screen, which by the way is the average reaction time. Here's a frustrating example of me being a victim of that. So what happened there is that he peeked and quickly killed me. On his screen he had peeked for a reasonable time, on my screen however I could only see half of his face. There is no possible way I could have killed him. So how do you take advantage of that? Well first off you have to know the map very well. You have to know what's behind the wall, there is no place for hesitation. Knowing where the enemy is or just common spots is also very helpful. And that's why the peeker's advantage is not a big deal for newer players but in games where all the players are very good it's a game changer. So if you know the map very well, can aim quickly and know that there's an enemy around a corner, you should go for the peek as you'll have a lot more time to react than if he peeks you. So you know, just be aggressive, don't let other players peek you. Holding wide angles in this game is generally bad. You want to hold angles as tightly as possible so that when you see an enemy, you can go back to cover, pre-aim at him through the wall and then peek yourself. Try to peek as quickly as possible, you know you have x milliseconds of advantage, you want to get the most out of them. Here's a good clip of me doing it. You'll see me go out for information, back to cover, pre aim through the wall, pre-firing while peeking. There's honestly not much they can do, they have to pull back. The best way to use the peeker's advantage is to go from crouch to standing because it's the fastest way you can peek and aiming is very easy that way. So try to find crates where when you're crouched you're completely covered but when you're standing you can see in front of you. If you're an average skilled player trying to get better the peeker's advantage is the number one thing you should think about. Applying this correctly will make you trade a lot more efficiently against good players. There's a bad side to the peeker's advantage. 
So, because the ghost is behind you, if you get to cover, you can still take damage while the ghost is out in the open. That's important to understand, but there's not much you can do about it. Let's talk about movement. Let's say that you know that there's an enemy around the corner, and he knows exactly where you are. You're in a pretty rough shape already, because if that guy knows what he's doing, he'll use the peeker's advantage, not giving you much time to react. The way you want to play this out is by strafing, aka dodging, even before you see the guy peeking. Because as you know, when he'll peek, it'll take some time for you to be able to see him. By quote-unquote pre-strafing, you avoid any kind of delay possible, optimizing your chance in that engagement. As you can see, at a high level, the peeker's advantage rules everything. You have to think about it all the time. What I just said also applies if you have slow reaction time, as it'll take a long time for you to react to the enemy peeking. You can then fix that problem by strafing before all of that happens. Try to lean as much as possible. I see a lot of players not using this feature enough, and like they could get so much better just by leaning more, which is very easy to do. And my last tip concerning movement is to hit the lean key as you're peeking a corner. That's going to make you peek even quicker, giving you a bigger peeker's advantage. Just know that it's pretty hard to do, so you should practice this. How to make better murder holes? Well, first you have to understand that there's multiple types of murder holes. There's the circular ones, which you make by shooting the wall or mealing it, and there's lines, which are made the same way. Let's talk about the circular holes. The pros are that if there's a dark wall behind you, it's pretty hard for an enemy to see if someone's peeking. Circular holes also take a lot less time to make. The con is that if you want to use it, you have to be in a very specific spot. So what the enemy team is gonna do is they're just gonna spray in the holes and they're gonna headshot you every time. Lines are a lot better at fighting people straight on because if you get peeked, the enemy will have to find you and then shoot your head instead of just shooting in the hole. Lines enable you to strafe left and right while fighting, making you a lot harder to hit. The cons are that if an enemy gets close to the line, he can see very well in that room and so it's easier for him to clear the sights. They also take a lot of time to make, so they're not viable everywhere you want them. So as you can see, even one of the most basic mechanic of siege, which is to punch holes in walls, can take a lot of decision making and trust me when I say that you'll be rewarded if you take the time to think about it. And the fifth thing that I wanted to talk about is crosshair placement. Crosshair placement is where you put your crosshair in general. Even when you're moving and not aiming, it should almost always be at head level. In this game, it is absolutely essential to have good crosshair placement. I have not yet seen a game that stresses this as much as Siege does. The reason to that is that Siege is all about headshots and peeker's advantage. In this game, the only thing that slows you down in fights is your aim. By the way, this is one of those things that everyone knows about, but a fraction of those people actually pay attention to it. A good way to evaluate your crosshair placement is to record yourself play the game. Having good crosshair placement will enable you to line up shots after shots without having to adjust your aim too much, making you so quick that the enemy won't be able to react quickly enough when you're peeking. Now, I receive comments about this all day. People ask me questions like, how can I get better at aiming, how did you improve your aim, etc. The truth is that there's no secret. Pay attention to your crosshair placement and the rest is practice. The one thing that I would recommend is to have a good mouse, a big mouse pad, and a lowish sensitivity. A good way to practice your aim, your crosshair placement, or just warming up is to do terrorist stunt as you'll have a lot of targets to shoot at. I really like doing terrorist stun before starting to play multiplayer because I really feel like it's an effective way to warm up. And so yeah, just start one, don't even use drones, just rush in and shoot as many heads as possible. Remember, by doing this, you're trying to improve your aim here. You're not trying to gain any tactical edge over the AI. So that's it for the tips. In conclusion, if you want to bring your game to the next level, you have to constantly think about the peeker's advantage. To profit from it, you need to own the other aspects of your gameplay. For example, your movement, your map knowledge, and your crosshair placement. Well guys, this is it. I worked really hard on this video, so I hope you liked it. As per usual guys, thanks for the support, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Flanking, oh, right now, flanking, two flanking. Friendly, last operator stays. Staircase, two staircase. Staircase, immediate. So it was a 3v2 and I had this angle covered. The red zones are where the enemies might be. Now 9 times out of 10, planting the diffuser right by the door is the right decision because, you know, after that it's nearly impossible for the defenders to defuse it. However, in this situation, it's highly likely that there's someone in ladder room which means that if someone tries to plant here, he's most likely gonna die. In my opinion, the correct placement here is behind the desk because that way there's no chance that the guy planting dies because he's using the support of both his allies.